Hey guys, I'll try and keep the intro short as we have quite a lot of info to go over, but this is the crazy build I've been running with Zane. I can tell you that it's very much unique. I haven't seen anybody else highlight a similar build on YouTube just yet. There's been a lot of focus on ability uptime and increasing damage that way. I don't rate it. In fact, I think this build that I'm showing you is one of the best at general mobbing and it's certainly one of the fastest Vault Hunters in the game, making it great for just general questing, circle of slaughter because your survivability is also pretty amazing, and also also, most importantly, Proving Grounds. I have two versions of this build, one for solo play in the gameplay that you're seeing in the background, it's just me on Mayhem 3, beating this in less than 10 minutes, which I think is a feat in itself, but also I ran a group build in the Twitch Rivals tournament where teams of four race to complete all the Proving Grounds on Mayhem 1, 2 and 3 the fastest with a points-based system, and we won. We won the full team prize of $20,000 about as eSports as it's going to get. But this build is all based on movement, mobbing, the damage that you can do. But most importantly, it's about keeping your Hitman kill skills up 100% of the time, which is possible with this build in a very odd manner. So in this video, we will be separating it out into solo and group play, mostly focusing on solo, but there are some pretty distinct differences in survivability, but I guess most importantly, activating those kill skills. If you just want to see the talents and like copy it and try it out yourself without any explanation, then it's on the screen if you want to have a go, both with solo and group play. This is where I'm going to talk a little bit about group play as I feel it really sets up why this build is so good and why you should definitely run it. But all of the stuff that I'm about to mention on why this build works still works for solo play. So don't worry, it's not going to be completely different. Kill skills are pretty much exactly what they say on the tin. When you kill an enemy, you activate these forms of perks. It's in previous Borderlands games, but just to highlight Zane's, the majority of them are in the Hitman skill tree, the blue one. And the kill skills that you want to be keeping an eye out for are Violent Speed, which increases your movement speed after you get a kill. Salvation, which provides lifesteal after getting a kill. Cool Hand, which increases your reload speed. Violent Violence, which increases your fire rate. They're the main ones that you want to be investing into, but there are two other kill skills that I did want to quickly highlight. Playing Dirty, where you have a chance to fire an extra projectile after five shots. And Good Misfortune, which after killing an enemy increases your action skill duration. Both of these I'm more inclined to avoid, certainly the latter, but Playing Dirty you can maybe put a couple of points into. It's up to you personally. And there is also a kill skill in Doubled Agent, which is the Orange Tree, and that is Donnybrook. Every time you get a kill, you gain gun damage and health regen for a few seconds. As you see on the gameplay after I get a kill you can see all of the perks activate beneath my XP bar and after a certain amount of time they do go away. So you have to constantly keep killing stuff which is easy when you're playing alone because you are the only person in your group you are the only one getting kills therefore it's easy to constantly keep those kill skills up. However what I realized in group play is that you need to get the final blows and that can be very inconsistent but if you're playing in a group you need to get the final blows to make sure that you proc your kill skills. If if you don't do that, they don't activate. Even though you might do 99% of the damage to one mob, somebody else comes in to get the final blow, it won't activate for you. And if you don't have those kill skills activated for movement speed, fire rate and reload speed, you aren't providing much to your team if you're playing in a group. So how can you keep your kill skills up without relying on killing stuff? That has a lot to do with the capstone seeing red. Activating an ability automatically activates all of your kill skills. You see it on screen, I put the digiclone down, all of my kill skills proc. So the build is based around activating your abilities as much as possible, because when you activate them, you proc your kill skills. Whilst the drone and the digiclone can put out a good amount of damage, or at least decent amount of damage, you're not really relying on them to do a lot. In fact, some of Zane's trees and some of Zane's talents have a big focus on keeping both your abilities up for as long as possible. There are two talents based on the duration of the action skills. Borrowed Time is one that you can find in Doubled Agent, which increases the duration for every active action skill and also the kill skill that we just highlighted with good misfortune when you kill an enemy your action skill duration is increased a little bit both of these talents avoid like the plague you don't really care about the duration of your skill in fact the shorter the better because the shorter the duration the quicker it goes on to cooldown the quicker it's off cooldown the faster you can press that button again to activate your kill skills to use in spikes of DPS as opposed to long periods, if that makes sense. The issue is with both of these abilities is that once you put them out, you can't put them away again. The drone especially is out for 24 seconds at least. So if you 
Activate it at the wrong time. For example, when you're moving from one area to the other in Proving Ground, where there's no enemies to kill, that is a waste and you won't be able to activate that for quite some time. Normally for the clone, it's the same. However, this is the 9000 IQ play that I realized. But this is why you run it with the Augment Doppelbanger, where after activating the skill, you hold down the button, causing the clone to explode, dealing splash damage to all nearby enemies. The more action skill time remaining, the greater the damage. But most importantly, you can put the clone instantly on cooldown meaning that it's up ready to use again much faster. And so I found myself doing stuff like this, planting the Digiclone down as we were heading out, instantly blowing it up to make sure that I have it on cooldown very shortly. And also if you can micromanage it, you could just keep renewing the Digiclone over and over and over again to keep your kill skills up without relying on the drone at all. So that's how you're able to keep up your kill skills 100% of the time, especially in a group where you can't get those kills naturally. Seeing as I mentioned augments, the other one that I pick up for the Digiclone is Digital Distribution. Whenever you take damage, it's shared to the clone instead, which is good at just keeping yourself alive, maybe killing off the clone a little bit faster, meaning that it goes on cooldown faster. It's all about just spending the Digiclone as quick as possible, either blowing it up yourself or getting it killed as fast as possible, so you can keep activating it over and over again. You're not putting too much stock into the damage that the Digiclone can do. The drone, however, can provide a lot of utility. I found myself flicking between these three augments. The first I always had on, which is Bad Dose, where the Sentinel occasionally shoots out a beam of radiation that weakens enemies and buffs you. It increases your fire rate, your movement speed, and also weakens the enemy with their movement speed and attack speed. Most importantly, it does radiation damage, which is good at getting rid of armor, which is an area where Zane struggles a little bit, but not too much. And then the other two I flicked between, Boomstay, where you add a rocket pod, doing a bit more damage on average, and also Static Field, which emits a Static Field that sends a shock beam to nearby enemies, draining their shields and replenishing yours. Not only is this good at killing enemies with shield health, if you don't have a shotgun, but also because it keeps your shields up. And this is really important, and this is where the group play separates from solo play. For solo play, like I mentioned, this is my skill tree. I put more points into grenade talents, even going as far as putting stuff into boom enhanced, to make the Digiclone stronger when it's out. Because I'm killing stuff, I don't need to worry about activating my Digiclone just to prop my kill skills. I can keep it out for as long as I want want so I can put more investment into increasing the damage there. However, if I'm not killing things consistently, either starting at the start of a proving grounds or I guess most importantly fighting a boss where you aren't killing one enemy, you're just fighting a big one, having the Digiclod to just sort of throw out whenever I need to is a nice feat to have. So I'd always have Doppelbanger just in case you need to get rid of that clone to re-trigger it. If you're playing in the group, you definitely want to be putting points into Adrenaline, which increases your action skill cooldown rate based on how full your shields are. If your shields are full, the greater the bonus, right? And this pairs up really nicely with the Guardian rank topped off if you've put 50 points into the Hunter tree. This is more of an optional thing, but your action skill cooldown rate is increased when at full shields. Doesn't say by how much though, but it just adds extra points into the Adrenaline tree. So for group play, you want to be making sure that you're full shields all of the time, or as often Often as possible, which reduces the cooldown on your abilities so you can press them more to proc your kill skills. Skill wise, those are the distinguishable differences between solo play and group play. Group play is all about your abilities, proccing kill skills that way and making sure that they're off cooldown as much as possible. With solo play being incredibly aggressive, not needing to rely on that, so outputting more damage instead. So for the solo play Zane, you can go much more aggressive and it doesn't get more aggressive than running the Shield Rough Rider alongside the Infiltrator class mod. We highlighted this in the other Zane video, but the Infiltrator Infiltrator class mod has the perk of increasing your weapon damage and movement speed when your shields are low. The lower the shields, the greater the bonus. Whenever you activate an action skill, it breaks your shields completely destroying it for a couple of seconds before it starts recharging. So you want to have as little shield as possible. What better way than to put it with the Rough Rider with a capacity of zero. So you have a shield that is never full alongside a class mod that increases your damage and movement speed when you don't have full shields, giving you a more offensive and mobile playstyle. For an artifact you don't need to be very picky, but I think the best in slot one would be the Auto Idol, which restores 18% of your max health after killing an enemy, which really helps with survivability, especially if you're playing on your own in fairly difficult areas such as leveling or proving grounds or circle of slaughter. Having that extra survivability along with the lifesteal and health regen kill skills that you have, I think is pretty important. So you can kind of pick and choose. You don't need to worry about this as much, but I think Auto Idol is the best if you have it. Just avoid the artifacts that decrease your 
your health by 75% or reduce it to one. Because of course you don't have any shield, you want as much health as possible. So solo play Zane doesn't want any shields. Group play Zane wants all of the shields all of the time. The class mod that you want to be running when in a group lines up to be more like the executor, executor, whichever one it is, which gives you additional kill skills whenever you kill an enemy, increasing your accuracy, handling, critical hit damage, status effect damage, and status effect chance, increasing a lot of different areas. The only thing that you need to watch out for is the extra talent points that they put into your skill tree, because as you'll see here, it puts one point into good misfortune, which increases the duration after killing an enemy and like I said we don't want long durations on our abilities we want short ones so we can activate them more often having one point in there doesn't make much of a difference but if it's like two or three then I would try and re-roll and get another one but it adds more points into your kill skills just making you really strong for the shield you want the recharger this is one I don't have yet surprisingly but as soon as your shields are depleted they instantly start recharging and there's about a 60 second cooldown on it activating again in a group, you very rarely lose your shields, so this is a great way to, if you do take a bit of damage, instantly get your shields back, increasing your cooldown rate on your abilities. But like I said, I don't have it, I still made it work, it's not super impactful, but it's certainly beneficial. In regards to the artifact, you will want Victory Rush, I think that's the best in slot personally, which increases movement speed and damage on a badass kill for 60 seconds. If you're running a Proving Grounds, you're going to be running into a lot of these, and more damage and more movement speed is really good to be the ultimate mobbing character. I found myself sort of on the outskirts of what my team was doing, to make sure that no enemies sort of ran away too far, just sort of clearing up after people. That's where Zane is the strongest. So those are the two best in slot builds for both solo and group play. What about the weapons? Well this is the easy bit because the weapons are good for solo or group play. My favourite weapon to run with this if you haven't noticed already is the Tog Laser Sploder because it's a nice beam of damage. When your fire rate is increased it adds more ticks. You can reload it fairly quickly. It's an elemental weapon. I think it's always fire but elemental guns are certainly the meta. They're the strongest guns in the game. So that's what I found myself running but to be honest any elemental weapon especially incendiary damage weapons are the ones that you can use and you'll get the most out of. Stuff like Hellfire, A Bitch, Lucian's Call, The Companion, all of these weapons that I've picked up and used had to use them in the Twitch Rivals tournament and you can still get effective use out of them. That's a really good thing about Zane. he can basically make any weapon work including the Flacker which became a bit ridiculous when we were playing with it in the tournament. For other elements I had the Bang Stick but any form of hard hitting shock weapon is good to have in case you need it. But of course like I said you can rely on the static field augment for the drone to do shock damage draining enemy shield so the drone is useful in a lot of cases it's similar with armor targets with bad dose doing radiation damage but if you want to look out for a corrosive weapon to use I think the Hornet is the best one again. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good corrosive weapon to run with Zane, hence why I really slowed down when fighting these armored dinosaurs. That's where I started to struggle and that's where my time started to look really bad on Zane. If I did have the right weapon, it'd be perfect, but also the mods on this Mayhem Free mode decreased radiation damage, which made it worse. Point is, weapons you don't really need to worry about too much, it's whatever you prefer to use. But something that has a high magazine that fires fast, because you can increase it beyond a crazy level with your kill skills. Grenades, you could basically use whatever you want. I would always recommend doing elemental damage of an element that you're using already. Fire, shock, corrosive, whatever you want to use. And having your drones and your digiclone drop them as much as possible. You don't need to worry about this too much, so you can make anything work. You can even run artifacts that increase your slide speed if you want to go crazy fast. But this is the speedster build I've been running on Zane, which is pretty much good anywhere apart from bosses, just because Zane is kind of bad against bosses anyway. This is going to be the build that I think a lot of people will be running speed running, especially the solo build with the Rough Rider shield and the Executor class mod. But so long as you understand the difference between playing solo and playing as a group, then I think you're hunky dory. But I use this when doing bits and pieces out of the world, questing and the like. I did this in Circular Slaughter like you've seen in some of the gameplay. Survivability is pretty much up there as good as it's going to get, even without any form of shield. Privy Grounds, it's amazing. Boss battles, it's pretty tough, but I think anything that Zane runs is going to be pretty tough against bosses. Not only is this a really effective build, it's also probably the most fun build in the game, I think. If you want me to cover some other Vault Hunters with particular guides, do let me know in the comments below, and subscribe for more Borderlands free content if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.